Coptic book binding. Here we go. So I've got my book and my signatures. My signatures have holes punched in them and my covers have holes punched in them. I'm going to start with your book. This is the front cover of my book. I'm going to start with the front cover face down on the tabletop to begin. Now, my stack of signatures, um, it doesn't matter to me with this book what order the signatures are. I don't have a designated first page or anything. So that's flexible and that just means I can set my stack of signatures um, aside and bind the signatures in whichever order um, I want to. If you had a designated title page or something and that designated signatures sitting on the bottom of your stack, you're going to need to bind your signatures um, from the bottom up, basically. So if you have a specific reason of order of signatures, you need to attend to that. In my case, I can just pull from the top and go from there. It's helpful to hang your book cover off the edge of your table a little bit, especially um, with when we sew the first signature onto the cover. It doesn't matter which side you start on. I'm going to start from the right. Another uh, quick terminology review. These columns of holes that will eventually become lines of stitching are your stations. And these groupings of pages are called signatures. So I've got my first signature waiting on my book and I'm going to start on my rightmost station. I'm starting on the inside of the book and I'm bringing, poking my needle out, pulling my thread through, leave yourself a tail about four inches or so. From coming out of the signature, I'm going to go down into the hole through my cover. I'm going to go down again and that creates a loop around like a kind of a wrap around the outer edge of my cover. I'm ultimately gonna go back in the hole into the signature, but before I do that, I'm gonna anchor my thread around this point by simply sending my needle around the edge to anchor that piece of thread there, my tail pulled through, and back into the hole um, that you came out of. Sometimes it helps if you're having your trouble, if your needle is having trouble coming in, to poke from the inside out, and then you have a nice um, pre-made tunnel to go back through the other side. So we're going to repeat that with all these other subsequent stations. So the move is to come out. of the hole, down through the hole in your cover, down again, creating a piece of thread that is wrapped around the edge of your cover. Now that anchor move was easy on the end because I could just send my needle around that's not as easy um, at this station. So what I'm gonna do is put my needle in between my cover and my signature and send it through on the one side of my station. Let's see if I can hold this so you can see. And then back out in between the cover and signature on the other side of the station. And that just creates that anchor that just anchors the piece of thread at the station. And now I can go back in the hole. It's definitely challenging with the camera in between you and your book. I hope you guys can see. Next station over. Come out down, down, 
down again, creating a loop around, a wrap around the outer edge of the cover. Before I go back in, I'm going in on the one side in between my signature and cover and then back out on the other side. In, out. You can see it's sort of each move, I'm giving a little tug or nudge to keep everything as straight as possible as I go. And back in the signature. Next station over, so it's out, down, down again for the wrap. Anchoring by going in on one side, out on the other. Tug kind of at each move back in the hole. Hopefully you guys are feeling a pattern. <clears throat> we just repeat. When you get to the end, if you're jumping ahead, don't go back into your signature on this last station yet. I'll do this one and show you what to do next. Out, down, and around, anchor, which I can do a little easier on this end because I can reach my needle around. It can be more like one move than two. And then back in. Here we are on the last station. We're gonna do all the moves the same, except we're not gonna go back into our signature. So out, down, back down. Do your tuck which is in one move because we're on the end. It's a little easier. Now, instead of going back in right now, it is now time to add our next signature. So I'm going to pull my next one to stack on top. Second signature here, and we simply go in the first hole on this side of our second signature. And I'm kind of taking every opportunity to keep my signatures stacked on top of each other, keep everything in order. From the inside, I'm going over to the next station. Now to anchor to the um, anchor point one below, I'm sending my needle in between my cover and my first signature. In there and coming out the other side coming out here that's a good angle I might do that in the future again kind of lining everything up and now we're back into the hole in the second signature, our top signature. And we've just created our little wrap, wrap around link in our chain stitch. So again, that's out the next station over. Sending my needle in between my cover and my first signature on the right side of my station and then popping it out in between my cover and first signature on the other side of this station to anchor my little link shape that I'm making in my chain stitch and then I'm back into the top signature, the second signature that we came out of. Cruising along. Kind of use my needle to, um, I'm applying pressure downwards on the edge and it kind of just flips it up to where I need it to be. Have a trick. 
And then again here, kind of lining things up again, giving a little tug and back in. Next station over, I'm out. Out, around, and in. The song you can sing to yourself. So if you have more uh, stations on your book than I have here, you will want to catch up at some point to get uh, caught up to the end, end station here. If you have less um, stations than my book, you probably have reached this point before me. Here we are on our end station. We come out, we anchor down around, which is easy because we're on the end. We can kind of do it in one move versus two. We're going to add our next signature on. So ultimately I'll be sending my needle into that next signature. Before we do that, we're gonna create a little twist in our end stitch, which is our kettle stitch. I'm gonna tuck my tail away to not confuse things. So before I go up and in my next signature, I have been working in a clockwise. I've been sending my needle right to left with my chain stitches. So since I went right to left with this first move, I'm coming left to right with this tuck. It's just the opposite of whichever way you've been doing it. And I'm sending my needle in between my first and second signature now this way. So that thread has traveled out of the top signature, looped around to make the chain, and then tuck, given a tuck before I'm back up. Now is the time to add my third signature. And since I've given my tuck, I'm ready to go into this station on this far side on our third signature. Lining everything up, giving a gentle tug, ready to move next station over. Now to make my anchor, to make my little chain, before we were in between the cover and the first signature, now I'm in between the first and second signatures. So I'm sending my needle in between there on the right side of my station and wrapping around and coming out on the other side of the station, creating that anchor, giving a little tug, and back in to complete my link in my chain stitch. So really, every signature you add on top, you're just going down one signature below to create your anchor point and then back in the hole at the station and the signature you're sewing. Next station over. And again, hopefully this is becoming intuitive. You just kind of give pause um, on your two end stations because that stitch is different than your chain stitch in between, but all your centralized stations are just this chain stitch and it's the same every time and hopefully it's getting meditative or kind of fun for you because you're going to do it a lot out in on one side again i'm on my third signature so i'm sending it between my first and second signature to create the anchor point And back in. Here we are on our end station, on our third signature. I come out, creating that anchor point is easier because it's one move, not two. I'm in between my first and second signature and just popping out this side again. Maybe I'll leave this hanging out just so I can show you this kettle again in slow motion. So I've come out I've looped uh, clockwise through that bottom anchor point. And then I'm gonna send my needle um, through the loop the other way to create a twist before going in the next signature.
my thread is getting shorter and I'm also on my fourth signature. I've got six total. So I'm gonna put a knot um, somewhere along here. We tie a knot in the inside of our book. So I will show you that. Maybe we'll put it right in the middle here. Um, I'll show you how to tie your thread. L very long pieces of thread are harder to wrangle and they tend to get more tangled as you sew. Um, for beginners or just for anybody who doesn't want to wrangle a long piece of thread, I recommend dividing your thread up. You will have a knot on the inside of your book. You'll see it in a moment how it will look. If it's really important you to not have a knot, you can go for it. You can sew a book this size in one long piece of thread. Um, but we will do a knot today and I will show you how that goes. So again, out the top signature you're in, down just one signature below, and that'll create an anchor to perform your link shape and back in. So I'm gonna tie my knot here. It's gonna be on the inside of the book in between um, these two stations here. It'll be in here, right here. Now what you don't, what you want to do is be sure that, here's, here's my other hole for my next station over. You want your knot to live in between these and not impede. If I made my knot kind of long, it would um, interfere, this hole would interfere and you would have too loose a piece. So your knot wants to live in between these two station holes and not create um, a longer length of thread than you need. One tip that I have is to trim your thread to kind of a manageable length. I can take my needle off the piece that I just cut um, and I'll be threading it onto my new piece, which will take a moment. So this new piece of thread that I got, here's the end that I'm going to tie. I'll try to keep this angle so that we can see it. It really is just um, a square knot, like two overhand knots. I've tied one and then the other. And again, I'm making sure that I um, situate that knot. Here's my other hole for my next station, making sure I'm in between in the middle of that space. And if you tug both tails, Tails are your friends. I usually leave a little um, bit of length on those guys just to ensure it doesn't unravel. And then this wax linen thread is great because you can kind of give a little squeeze to your knot and that keeps it together as well. So you can see, here's my um, other station. My knot lives in between there. Now I've got a nice long fresh piece of thread and I can keep going. Next station over, continuing on. Kind of back to regularly scheduled programming here, doing our link stitches that hopefully by now we know so well. I'm in the fourth signature. I'm gonna send my needle in between the second and third signature, creating an anchor point just one below. I suppose if you tried to send your needle through, the, through these top two signatures, nothing would happen because you're not actually anchoring around anything. So hopefully it's intuitive. Back in the hole you came out of. Out. Anchor around. And in. Here I am on my outermost station on this right side. I come out. Creating my link is easier because I'm on the end. I just go in between my second and third signature, loop my thread through. And before I head into the next, to the hole of the next signature I'm going to add, I'm just giving a tuck the other way. So I had been coming this way and now I'm tucking. It's a little like a figure eight move. 
just to create a twist, a little loop. Here comes my next signature going in. I'm going to give myself a wider hole. So now I'm on the fifth signature. It's station over. Sending my needle in between the third and fourth signatures to anchor. One below. Coming out. Little tug back in. kind of common for your thread to tangle sometimes behind the scenes just be checking as you go that you don't you know if you had a knot hanging things up and you didn't know it just kind of be giving a look as you can as you go along or be sort of feeling that your thread is on track out Down and around and back in. I mount my fifth signature going in between my third and fourth signature on the right on my right hand side out on the left hand side of the station and back in. An ultimate kettle stitch, I suppose. That's where we're at, if I'm, if I'm correct. Anchor around. Putting my needle kind of between my top signature and the next one down to create that tuck. It just keeps the twist, the look of things tighter and a little finer. And in our top signature, sixth signature for this book, final signature. Hopefully by now you're feeling it, feeling the rhythm, enjoying the dance. On the end, come out, do your anchor move, easy peasy on the end, one move, a little tuck for good measure. Now on the inside of our last signature, we've already sewn um, a row. We're going to add our back cover now. Um, and that'll add a second, uh, you'll have two lines of stitching to the inside of your back cover and I'll open that up and show that in a moment once we get going. So adding the back cover, 
Again, try to keep things stacked um, on top and in place as best you can. It's a little bit of the inverse of how we put our front cover on. So I'm hanging on the outside here of my farthest station on this side. I'm gonna go up with our front cover. We were sewing down, down on our back cover. Now we're gonna go up and then up again, creating that double wrap around the outside edge of the cover. And now before I go back into my signature, I do wanna anchor. So I'm in between my cover and my first signature, sending my needle in between the cover and first signature and out, um, out this other side. And again, I'm kinda keeping my fingers holding the cover in place as much as um, I can while I do that. It just helps once, if you get too off track, you gotta kinda put everything back and then pull all your tension back. Here's a move that can sometimes be challenging. We've got quite a few pieces of thread running in and out of this hole. I am sending my needle into the hole of my sixth signature I'm poking it through and I'm aiming to end up, and I have, in the center of my um, sixth signature. A common mistake is to make that poke move and to end up in between a different page. Just give it a check before you send your needle all the way through. Now I will see if the camera angle picks this up. At this point, I'll hold it up. At this point, I've got my Let's tuck my tail to not confuse things. At this point, I have my thread hanging out the back tail tuck. So I've just gone in this hole. My thread is running um, straight back. My thread runs this way and I've got it back here. I'm just pulling, I'm gonna lay my book flat and I'm just pulling straight back, straight this way not hard, I'm just showing the direction. Just a nice, gentle, even tug. If you pull too hard, you might rip the pages, but that helps um, with your tension. It helps sort of bring everything together. And that's kind of the last move at this station for the cover. So again, I'm in between signatures here. I'm coming out of the hole in the next station. And so you can see I'm making a double um, row of thread here but that's what it takes to add our cover. So out the next station over, up through the hole in the cover, up again, creating a wrap, double line of thread running now. And before we go back in, we're gonna tuck to anchor. So sending my needle in between my cover and my signature on this side of the station and then back out on this side of the station to create a nice looking little anchor and give a little tug at that point. Now I'm ready to go back in my hole moment of truth. You might have to try a couple times sometimes. So I'm in what I believe to be it and yay I did it. Now I am, uh, my thread is running straight back here. Do, do, do. Again lining everything up and just giving a gentle tug just straight back in that direction should kind of shore everything up. Next station over, coming out. And you'll see, I think at this point I can point it out. So now we've got double, double strands running and we're gonna have that along the inside of your last signature. We'll just have a double strand running through. Up and up. 
anchor tuck needle in between my signature and my cover on one side, coming out the other side. Gentle tug, shoot it through best you can. Another option would be to come from the inside, send a nice, um, send the needle out just to create that space so then you can kind of see it from one side. Easier to put it in this way. Again, laying my thread straight back, closing my book and gently giving a tug. You can kind of see how it all pulls together. Out the next station over, up through the cover, hole in the cover, around and up again for a wrap. Anchor around your station, one side, then the other. Little tug back in. Give a check to make sure you're in the right spot. I am back here, pulling little tug straight back. As you get more stations done on your cover, your book becomes a little less floppy, a little more secure on these last couple. Up and up to wrap around. I might be close enough. Let's see if my needle's long enough to do this in one move now. Can I? Almost, not really. <laughs> Anchored around that point. Tug, tug. Back in. Give myself a tunnel. So, yeah, you can see I'm coming out from the inside, not all the way, but now I've got this great looking surefire hole to work with. Tug toward the back gently. Last station. Out. Up. Up again. My anchor is easy because I can just send it through one move for a wrap. Now I'm back in my last hole, last signature. Gentle tug. Attempt to move the camera up a bit to show, to tie these knots off. See if we, yeah. Tiny bit better. So we're here on our last uh, we've come out of this station of our signature. I'm just going to send my needle under both of these um, two stitches, essentially these spans of thread. And it's just an overhead knot. We're going to tie a knot off, overhand knot. So I've just gone around once. Now this wax linen thread is um, really great. It's nice and tacky. It doesn't come too loose. One knot is fine if you if that makes you anxious. Sometimes people don't believe me that one knot is fine, and you can do two. I think I often do two. And again, in this situation, tails are your friend. I usually like to cut my tail as long as it will be as long as it will live without hanging out the book. So cut that there. It can just live live in there. Again, give it a little press. Um, on the other side, we have our tail from before, from the very beginning. If you wanna do that same pull move, you know, pulling it just gently straight in case anything has come loose while we've been sewing, but just open it on up. I'll try to hold this in place and not drop the book, but um, just kind of gently pulling that span of thread up to tuck under it and then just through. So it's just a knot down and around. We'll do two little press 
and a snip of the tail. So that's it. We've got all our signatures and our two covers. We've got nice chain stitches on the in on the middle stations and kettle stitches on the edges. Something I like to do um, at the end sometimes is I'll kind of take a look. I can use my needle and you can kind of go back and put some things in place if something looks a little to the side or um, you know something ended up being a little shaped differently than you would like. You can kind of tell this wax linen thread to shape up. Front of our book, back of our book, lovely signatures. Well, hopefully you did it. Congratulations. Coptic binding.